All right, so before I start this video, I just want to say thank you very much to all my subscribers because this week finally hit 1K subs. Now, with that being said, I do want you to know nothing on the channel is really going to change. I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm not going to start adding a bunch of commercials to all of my videos and monetizing everything because that's not really what this channel is about. I'm not saying that stuff will never, ever happen, but right now, you know, the, the game's in a bad spot. I don't really you know, need to monetize everything and just make my videos annoying to watch. So, you know, you don't have to worry about that for right now. All right. So in this video, I want to go over shade levels or the SHD levels and, you know, those bonus levels that you get, basically you can invest, you know, a little bit into your offense, defense, utility, or like the weapon handling, that kind of stuff. I haven't really covered it and I haven't really talked about them. You know, it's kind of been that thing that, you know, I have, I have used them, you know, they affect my stats, but I've never actually directly mentioned or merely showed them or what I'm investing into. So I figured it would be a good time to actually show you what I plan on investing into and what I currently have. So my recommendation is to first go with weapon damage. The reason for this is pretty simple. Weapon damage affects everything you do with your gun. So if you're hitting a headshot, if you're hitting a weak point, if you're hitting a skill object or, you know, one of those uh, uh, objective points like on the, on the raid or something, you know, one of the terminals, this, you know, will help you. So obviously weapon damage works for everything. So, you know, why not use it, right? Now, the next one is kind of up to you. Uh, I personally am going for crit damage. The reason I'm going for crit damage is because it's fairly easy to get crit chance. But if you want to get the most damage on a DPS build, you probably want that crit damage layer. Now you can get 20% just from your offensive stats. After that, I'm going to go with crit chance and that'll basically just give me, you know, a couple extra slots that I can just put other things into, you know, just to make my build a little bit more balanced rather than just have, you know, all DPS stats and that's it. And the reason I'm not going with headshot damage, the reason I'm saving that for pretty much last is because I don't really rely on headshots. I mean, if you're really good at the game and you are in like, you know, the, the top 1% of people who can aim, you know, headshots fine. That might be a very good thing for you. But the reality of the situation is the majority of players are not very good at getting headshots. I mean, it's just a simple fact. So if you, if you want to believe that you are, yeah, sure. You know, whatever, invest in headshots. But I've seen the, you know, the after action reports from, you know, from the missions. I've seen players accuracy. You know, if you are not in the 60% accuracy or above, having these headshots is probably a waste of time for you. If you are hitting like 40, 30% accuracy, I'm really not going to believe that you're getting all those in headshots. And if you are getting all those in headshots, you are wasting so much damage just trying to, you know, miss headshots. That's, that's pretty much it. By missing headshots, you are losing damage. So I'm not going to encourage players to invest into headshots if they can't actually hit them. That's, you know, that doesn't make any sense. So for that reason, headshots last. All right, for the defensive stats, my number one investment was in hazard protection. Uh, the reason for this is because, you know, hazard protection, I don't really use it on my build that much, right? I, it's very annoying to have to invest that much into hazard protection. Uh, there's some other stats that I would much rather invest into. And... This way, it was a very easy way to actually at least get some hazard protection. That way, if I did, you know, put 10 or 20% on my actual build, I did, you know, get a little bit more return just because it was on my on my actual defensive investment. Um, you know, if I have a full DPS build, you know, getting, you know, 10% armor isn't really going to help that much. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, adding 66,000 armor is meaningless, you know, on a DPS build. I mean, is in PVE that's almost worthless. In PVP, that's a, a single bullet from an SMG. So I went in with hazard. My next investment will be armor. Um, my next investment after that will be explosive resistance. But to be honest, explosive resistance is really more of a PVE type uh, benefit. I mean, yes, it happens in PVP, but you know, with the modifiers in PvP already and with, you know, the, the status effects and all this stuff. I mean, having explosive resistance really isn't going to help you out that much. Um, and the reason I'm saving health for last is just because, I mean, you don't have much health at all anyway. I mean, you have about 300,000 health. And just adding 10%, so you're going to be adding 30k health. It, you know, it just doesn't seem like it's worth the investment to me, right? I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spec into health as my 
you know, I'm not going to spend all these points that I'm gathering into something that's going to give me such a, you know, very, very little return. Yeah, it's just not worth it to me. So for defense, I went full hazard, then I'm going to go armor, then explosive resistance, and then finally health. Now for handling, I think the most important one in the handling department is stability. I mean, that affects, you know, a lot of those very good but unstable weapons, you know, like LMGs. So that's that's where I went with I went full stability. And the reason I'm going accuracy is because obviously that just benefits with the stability, right? I mean, that just keeps all my shots close together and, you know, they're more stable. They work together very nice, right? And then for my third one, I'm going to go with reload speed because that just, you know, increases my DPS. You know, the faster I reload, the more, you know, DPS I can put down range. But the last one I'm going to do is ammo capacity. I mean, that really is just a, a, a nice to have kind of bonus. I mean, it doesn't really do any functional benefit. It does not improve me as a character. It does not improve me hitting shots. It does not increase my damage. It doesn't increase my survivability. It gives me more ammo if I am very, very bad at, at aiming. That's it. So for that reason, ammo is last. And then to cover the utility stats, my number one investment was in skill haste. Why skill haste? Well, because every skill, no matter what, and every build, no matter what, can always use skill haste doesn't matter what build you have, skill haste will pretty much always benefit you unless, with, with the rare exception being hardwired. If you're using a four-piece hardwired, yeah, skill haste won't really help you that much. But if you get into a situation where, you know, your cooldown malfunctioned or something and you need it, you know, that's it's always a good thing to have, right? So if, if you're using a skill builds or if you're using healer builds or you're using some sort of, you know, skill tier build that does not use, you know, hardwired, or you're using any damage build or using any armor build, from my perspective, skill haste is probably the, the best you know stat to invest into there. After that, the, the next obviously most common thing that I use is basically damage skills. So then of course I'm gonna go into skill damage. And then you know the final choice between skill repair and skill duration is kind of up to you. Um, they do have some intermingling benefits, like if you're using the the uh, healing chem launcher, you know duration can be great for that i mean if you get a full 20 percent, i think it'll add a second to the duration of the chem launcher which is an additional tick which is great um it's more it's more of an increase over the you know just this amount of skill repair alone but if, if you're using something like the hive you know the restorer hive well then the duration probably isn't what you need so you know go for repair so the, 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 so the last one is really up to you i would say go with repair because you know, if you are using, you know, the the Restorer Hive, or if you're using the the Mender Seeker, or you're using the, the Fixer Drone, yeah, I think you're probably going to benefit more from having the skill repair than you would from having the skill duration. So I would probably save skill duration for last, with the exception being if you are using the Chem Launcher. If you're if you're a heavy Chem Launcher user, um, you're using let's say the Oxidizer, or you're using the Reinforcer then I would definitely go with the duration because, you know, that just increases the length that your cloud is in the air, right? So you get more healing or you can get more, you know, uh, oxidizer damage. And, you know, obviously that just helps you as a player, right? So I think that's that's the better benefit there. But if you're using any of the other skills, I don't really think duration is very important for you. So for that reason, probably duration would be last for most builds. And the other thing, I just want you guys to know, you don't need to actually use your scavenging. You don't need to actually cash in those points. If you have scavenging points, you can save them for a point when you actually need to have those materials. If you don't need them right away, you know, you don't need to use them. So sit on them, save them for a rainy day. But, you know, for right now, if you don't need them, don't use them. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one.